The coronavirus is starting to look like learning a new language. Just when you think you get the hang of it, it bamboozles you. On this week's episode of Headlines, we'll be looking at some COVID-19 updates, the US protest scene, Donald Trump's hotel antics, the West Indies versus England cricket saga, embassy removals in the US and China, and finally, emus in Australia. Welcome to Headlines. Hong Kong is experiencing a third wave of the coronavirus, witnessing more than 100 cases per day for the last two weeks. While patient zero for this third wave has not yet been identified, the vast majority of cases are spreading locally and have not been imported by foreign travellers. On Wednesday, the government brought in a host of new measures, including a ban on more than two people being together outside. There is also a ban on dining in restaurants, and it is compulsory to wear a mask outside of the house. At the moment, these restrictions are set to last for a week. The government is even considering imposing partial lockdowns on several hotspots in the city. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, finally tested negative for the virus this week after testing positive three times. Bolsonaro first tested positive on the 7th of July and after spending almost three weeks in self-isolation, he seems to have shaken the virus. He claims this is because he used a drug that treats malaria. However, this drug hasn't been proven to work with the coronavirus. Bolsonaro has openly opposed coronavirus prevention measures such as wearing face masks and practicing social distancing and has also fired two health ministers. What's the Brazilian equivalent of a Karen? The coronavirus situation in India shows no sign of improvement. A government study released last week showed that a quarter of the population of New Delhi, the country's capital, has had the virus since it first broke out in the country. Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, said last week that nearly 25 million Iranians, almost a third of the population, have been infected. He also ended his statement on an optimistic note. The situation is getting worse. And in Thailand, hungry monkeys are wreaking havoc. They usually rely on tourists for their meals, and since the tourists are gone, the crab-eating macaques of Thailand are invading the city of Lop Buri. They've been ripping windshield wipers off cars, taking over street shops, and sneaking into and stealing even more goods from houses. I think we knew Planet of the Apes would happen eventually. It just makes sense for it to be in 2020. All hope should not be lost, though. Scientists at Oxford University announced a vaccine breakthrough last week. After conducting trials involving over 1,000 people, they concluded that the vaccine was safe and was successful in triggering an immune response to the coronavirus. According to the BBC, the vaccine was developed from a genetically engineered virus that causes the common cold in chimpanzees. Countries are rushing to get their hands on these vaccines. The UK has already ordered 100 million doses. However, according to Prime Minister Boris Johnson of the UK, it's unlikely that anyone will be getting a vaccination this year. In non-corona news, the political unrest in the US that erupted after the death of George Floyd has shown no signs of settling down. President Donald Trump ordered the deployment of semi-military federal officers into American cities, including Chicago and Portland. This is a big step, because usually these decisions are made by mayors using local forces. While the president says the troops are there to squell a surge in homicides and shootings carried out by the radical left, officials say that the military officers were sent in to address the growing protests which have been going on for the past three months all over the USA. The deployment of these officers has done little to settle the unrest in these cities, however. For example, federal officers in Portland have reportedly been unable to stop the protests, and in fact, more demonstrators have taken to the streets as a result of their deployment. Staying in the USA, Democrats are scorning President Trump for trying to slip a plan to revamp the FBI headquarters into the $1.75 billion virus relief package. The FBI HQ is in Washington, D.C., and Trump wants it to stay just where it is. For more than 10 years, the FBI has been begging Congress for the money to move their headquarters from downtown D.C. to the city's suburbs, a cost-saving and security-enhancing plan. However, Trump said no. The main reason? Since the FBI's HQ building takes up a large chunk of land next to the Trump International Hotel. If the FBI moves, the land would be up for grabs and would be a gift for any hotel developer. By giving the current headquarters a makeover, Trump is essentially making sure the FBI building stays where it is, so his hotel doesn't face any competition. This decision has obviously drawn a lot of backlash, since the relief plan from which Trump wants to take the money was meant to focus solely on reviving the American economy. 
Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi has said they don't have the money for food stamps, but they have the money for an FBI building just so they can diminish competition for the president's hotel. Even die-hard Trump fans are questioning the president's motives. This all feels like a big game of Monopoly. Donald Trump is your lame, try-hard friend who takes the game way too seriously and ruins it for everyone and flips the board when he loses. Now to sport. The cricket test match series between West Indies and England finished this week, with England winning 2-1. The match was like all other sports matches played these days, played in an empty stadium. To beat the virus, all players were in a bio-bubble, so they were meant to stay in a defined area which included their hotel, just as if they were in quarantine. Jofra Archer, an English bowler, however, decided to head on home after the first match, setting off a firestorm on social media. He could have ruined it for everyone, not to mention blowing all the money that went into setting up this match in the first place. He was immediately dropped from the series. Lesson learned, don't pop the bubble. Next to China. The US consulate in Chengdu was shut last week because of the beef between China and the US. Things have become thorny over trade, the coronavirus, China's claims over the South China Sea, as well as the national security law introduced in Hong Kong. China's move was in answer to the US closing the Chinese embassy in Houston, Texas. China believes that the US consulate could have posed a major threat to the country had it remained open, which was kind of what the US said about the embassy in Houston. But look, if you want to talk about threats, there are still 21 KFCs and 15 McDonald's open in Chengdu. Surely these pose a way bigger threat than the US consulate. I mean, have you seen what goes into their burgers? And finally, a yarn from down under. An Australian pub in the outback town of Yaraka banned emus due to bad behaviour. The emus, Carol and Kevin, recently discovered that they could walk up the stairs of the Yaraka hotel and they liked what they found inside. So the hotel has put a rope to across the stairs to stop them. Emus are big birds and are not used to being indoors, so obviously their antics left quite a mess. Chris Gimblet, who runs the hotel, says Kev and Carol are masters at stealing food and drinks, but when they get a fright, they just start running and flapping and bumping into everything. Carol and Kevin are masters at getting their grub and apparently can drink a mug of coffee without spilling a single drop. I guess it might sound funny to us, but having to clean up after those emus is probably not as amusing as we think. On that note, those are your headlines for this week. I'll see you next time on Headlines. Thank you.